All right, so let's start with the big story that we are tracking on Vyona Desar. Nord Stream has been a buzzword even before the war began in Ukraine. And now with the war in its eighth month, the crucial gas pipelines between Russia and Europe continue to be at the center stage. And this week, there were four major leaks that were reported at different points in the pipelines. Now, the back-to-back -back major gas leaks reported in Danish and Swedish waters almost immediately sparked her off over who did it. While the West has accused Russia of sabotage and terrorism, Russia has openly blamed the Americans for being behind this incident. Now, the United Nations Security Council also met over this. So the question, of course, is who really is behind this sabotage? The likelihood that this was carried out by Russia, I think, is substantial, uh, in part because it's absurd that either the United States or the EU would have deliberately attacked this pipeline. It's also kind of absurd that the Russians would do it because it's a pipeline that the Russians have invested a lot of money in. Meanwhile, the Danish Prime Minister rushed to 10 Downing Street. Mette Frederiksen met with British Prime Minister Liz Truss in London, and the two leaders discussed what they agreed was a clear case of sabotage to the Nord Stream gas pipelines. Now, early on Friday, the Russian President Vladimir Putin directly accused the United States of America and its allies of blowing up the Nord Stream pipelines. The EU and the United States have stopped short of explicitly blaming Russia so far. However, Ukraine and Poland have not been so cautious. They've charged Moscow for planned terror attack on the gas pipelines that Russia owns and maintains. Now, incidentally, the leaks have occurred just one day before the launch of the Baltic pipe. Ever since the war began in Ukraine, European nations have sought to try and reduce their dependence on Russian gas. The Baltic pipe would have done the same for Poland. Now, in the fog of accusations and counter-accusations, the situation at ground zero remains extremely perilous. The United Nations Environment Programme has highlighted that the ruptures on the Nord Stream gas pipelines have led to what is being described as the biggest single release of methane gas ever recorded. Energy Minister has said that leaks would, of course, continue for at least about another week before the gas eventually escapes from the pipelines. Now, the leaks have also generated plenty of theories, but few clear answers about who or what might have caused the damage. However, experts have said that the scale of the damage and also the fact that the leaks are from far from each other on two different pipelines indicate that this was an act that was intentional and this was an act that was well orchestrated. All right, now to give us more insights in terms of what exactly may have happened and why is it that the Nord Stream pipelines were attacked in this manner. We're being joined, joined by Mr. Glenn Carl, who's joining us live from Boston, who's a national security and foreign policy expert. Now, Mr. Carl, this, this is something that baffles everyone who looks at what has in fact happened with the Nord Stream gas pipelines. Now, these are pipelines that were built by the Russians. They spent billions of dollars. And the Russians earned billions of dollars in terms of revenue by supplying gas to Europe. And also the fact that the Nord Stream pipelines gave so much political leverage to Russia or European capitals is something that is well documented. With that being the case, who do you think would gain by sabotaging the Nord Stream gas pipelines? Well, thank you for having me. Most of the uh, factors or, or perspectives that you just uh, cited are no longer uh, operative, actually. Yes, the investment was made, it cost a lot of money, but the um, the gas was no longer, had not started to flow in Nord Stream 2 and has been uh, shut down progressively in Nord Stream 1. And it's quite clear uh, that uh, gas uh, from Russia is not going to flow uh, for the imaginable future to Europe as soon as uh, Europe can, um, establish alternative sources, which it's aggressively seeking to do. So it's a lost investment in that regard. Second, from the financial perspective, which I think this is a minor consideration, but nonetheless, by having uh, uh, attacked or damaged these pipelines, actually it becomes conceivable for the investors to seek a, a um, an insurance payment and to be uh, 
less financially liable for a total loss than conceivably would otherwise be the case. But those factors, I think, actually are not where the issue lies. Uh, the Russian intelligence services have a long history of sowing chaos, creating fear. Uh, and you look, one must look at who has a motive to do something like this. You know, that's that's and, exactly the question really I'm asking you. Who Russia. has the motive to do something like this? Because the Americans have quite clearly blamed the Russians, but the Russians have turned around and have given a very logical argument. They've said that if we want to stop gas flowing into Europe, then we would not go around blowing these gas pipelines that we own. We can just turn off the valve. Why would we do it? They've blamed the Americans for this. Well, but the gas pipelines have been turned off and the, and the uh, Europeans are turning off that which remains. So I don't think that argument actually holds water, uh, although all the water is now flowing into the pipeline instead of gas. It, it really is not a convincing argument at all. What does convince or seem plausible at least a bit is to uh, sow uh, apprehension uh, among the Europeans and the West that their network of uh, gas supply lines uh, is very vulnerable. And here the Russians conceivably uh, have hit one uh, which no longer uh, is something that can help the Russians. The last thing I'll say for, uh, right. for this is that the U.S. has been careful not to say that the Russians did it. They say, I believe, the most plausible uh, perpetrator would be, but we do not know. You know, my last question to you, uh, Mr. Carl, before we let you go, is because this, this now sets a new sort of a precedent, because the world is a global, well-connected world. Now, this was a pipeline that supplied gas from Russia into Europe. There are other key aspects of infrastructure that are common for people around the world. Like, for instance, you know, this, this is something that a lot of people have now been talking about. Uh, internet cables, these could be targeted if there is one country that may not be happy with another to disrupt internet, uh, to to, to, to disrupt internet uh, for a particular nation. And this is something that could be done because all of these are essentially cables that not, are not very well guarded. Uh, absolutely, that's true. Uh, there, there have been over the years by numerous uh, nations um, uh, intelligence operations or attacks against uh, telephone uh, cables and electric cables uh, under seas uh, in all different parts of the world, and this goes back decades and decades. Uh, the vulnerability that you mention is absolutely real. Um, there are cyber attacks by the thousands and thousands every day, which I would put into the same category of the, the network of uh, electronic um, and uh, physical cables that bring us all together that uh, enable, with satellites that enable you and me to speak now is tremendously vulnerable, and, and uh, it is an alarming uh, thought, definitely. Absolutely. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Glenn Carl, for joining us from Boston and getting us that perspective there. Thank you. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.